welcome back to the second lecture of anatomy of the pulp so as we have previously discussed that the anatomy of the tooth is very complicated so you need to have an idea of the anatomy to have a successful endodontic treatment so to just sum up what we have previously studied or the terminologies is the anatomical apex the radiographic apex the major diameter the minor diameter and the working length so a just a revision of the minor and the major diameter minor diameter is the minor constriction or the most uh, narrowest part of the root canal where we should end our root canal treatment and the major foramen sorry the major diameter of the apical foramen is where the pulp extends into the periapical area another terminology that you should remember is the cemento dentinal junction that is the junction between the dentin and the cementum of the tooth so this is a picture of the apex of the tooth so this is the cdj or the cemento dentinal junction usually this is a histological landmark and cannot be located clinically or radiographically sometimes it may coincide with the minor diameter then what is roof of the pulp chamber and floor of the pulp chamber so this is the roof of the pulp chamber just above the pulp chamber so the thin dentin over the pulp forms the roof of the pulp chamber so these are the extensions of the pulp horns into the dentin so for any successful endodontic treatment we should completely deroof the pulp chamber meaning you have to remove the pulp chamber sorry re remove the roof of the pulp chamber completely only then we can land up in the pulp chamber now this is the floor of the pulp chamber where we can appreciate the orifices I, as i mentioned in the previous lecture the orifices are uh, where the pulp chamber extends into the root canal some something like the gateways these are the orifices you can always appreciate a pulp chamber in a different color it is darker when compared to the walls of the dentin so this we will be discussing further when we study about the axis tooth preparation next wien's classification of the root canals now as we have seen earlier the pulp extends into the root and exits through the apical foramen we are clear about this but it does not it is not just in a single root canal in all the teeth this is the simplest anatomy of a tooth where the pulp the root pulp chamber extends as a root canal and exits as one root canal that is this one apical foramen but there are few teeth with two root canals that is you may have two orifices in the pulp chamber in the floor of the pulp chamber but as they extend apically they unite into one and there is only one apical foramen the third type is there are two orifices two pulp canals and they exit separately that is there are two apical foramen the most complicated is the type 4 that is one orifice one root canal which divides at the apical portion of the root into two that is there two apical foramina why is it complicated as yes, it is most challenging for an endodontist to treat such teeth later what to see further classified he further studied more teeth and said there are few more variations of the root canals and came up with this classification where there are eight types of root canal morphology so if you remember the wien's classification that would be suffice for a bds level but to score more marks you would you should also remember that vertices classification consists of eight types of morphology so the one and two are the same as wien's classification later there are variations so here if you see it is one two one meaning one orifice one root canal dividing into two and again joining into one two two is similar to the wien's type 
and 1, 2 is very similar to Wien's type 4. And this is two orifices seen which join into one and again divided, divide into two. And this is the most complicated one root canal joining into two again. Sorry, one root canal dividing into two, joining into one and again dividing into two. So this is vertices classification of root canals. So this is something which you are very familiar with. All of you must have done the tooth carvings in your first year, BDS. So you need to remember the length of the tooth. This is the average length of the tooth. Why should we know this is to have an idea of the working length. So that we do not extend our instruments far beyond the apical foramen or limit it to the minor constriction. There may be a small variations in the lens depending on person to person but on an average this is what we usually find. Similarly, the length of the teeth in the mandibular, in the mandible. Now, so this is and the pulpal anatomy or the chamber or the pulp chamber also differs from tooth to tooth naturally. The it takes up it is it usually takes up the external shape of the tooth. So here in the anterior teeth, this is how it extends. And this is the axis tooth preparation, axis cavity preparation. So this is in the proximal view. This is how we enter or gain access to the root canal. If we have to treat this tooth, this is how we enter or cut a cavity, gain an access and then introduce our instruments. Similarly to the lateral incisor. Usually the axis cavity preparation for these teeth is triangular in shape which is similar to the shape of the pulp chamber. Now coming to the mandibular incisor. Similar to the maxillary incisors, here also we find a triangular shape of the pulp chamber. That is why the axis tooth preparation for a mandibular canine is also triangular in shape. Only difference is that the pulp chamber is comparatively small. As you know, the size of the tooth is also very small. The mandibular incisors are smaller in size when compared to the maxillary incisors. But a small variation to be noted here in the root canal morphology is that it can have two orifices, two root canals extending down and exit as two apical foramen. So this is type 3 of Wien's classification. This is one morphology variation that we can expect while treating a mandibular incisor. The canines are usually simpler and this is the shape of the pulp chamber that is ovoid in shape and this is how an axis is gained to the canines. It is usually ovoid for both the mandibular and the maxillary canines. Coming to the maxillary first premolar, there is a variation in the root canal morphology if you have observed here. So here it is 2-2 configuration that is type 3 of Wien's classification and this is type 2 of Wien's classification that is 2 root canals joining into 1. So when we are treating maxillary first premolars, we need to keep this in mind. The two variations that can happen in the maxillary first premolar and this is the shape of the axis to preparation. So these are the two orifices that are seen once we have opened it up. The maxillary second premolar, yes, it is usually either a single large pulp chamber or sometimes we find it dividing it into two and exiting as two apical foramina. Another variation is the bionic shape roots that we can expect in a maxillary second premolar. So if it is a single orifice, or a single canal this is how it looks after we do an axis cavity preparation and but if it has two root canals this is how it looks but whatever said and done the shape of the root canal is ovoid in shape sorry the shape of the pal axis tooth preparation is ovoid in shape the coming to the mandibular first premolars yes see this will dictate the shape so similarly we have ovoid in shape the mandibular first premolars also can have this type of variation where a single orifice can divide into two again join into one. This goes into vertices classification. So this is sometimes you can directly find two orifices in the 
axis cavity. The mandible has second premolars as we have discussed type 4 of vertices classification which is most difficult. Mandibular second premolars are usually called an enigma for an endodontist that is a nightmare. So whenever we are treating mandibular second premolars we have to keep this variation in mind and complete the endodontic treatment. Sometimes it can be as simple as one to, uh, root canal exiting as one and these you, you should also expect some curvature in the root. So if it is two root canals this is how it looks or a single root canal. The maxillary first premolars you know the size of the tooth so similarly the pulp chamber is also big so that is why the axis cavity for a maxillary premolar is this shape. Sometimes we find two root canals in the mesiobuccal root. So this is the mesiobuccal root, the distobuccal root and the palatal. The palatal, this is the mesiobuccal root which can have two root canals then it will be named as mesio MB1 and this is MB2. Mesiobuccal root canal, mesiobuccal 2 root canal. This is the distobuccal root canal or the distobuccal orifice and the palatal orifice. This is how it looks. If it is only three root canals that is no MB2 then this is how the axis cavity looks and these are the orifices. In a maxillary second premolar a more simpler one the, anatom the anatomical variations are usually less. So this is how you find and sometimes you can also expect only two root canals that is there is a fusion of the mesiobuccal and the distobuccal root. So there is and there can be only single buccal orifice and one palatal orifice. For a mandibular first molar it is usually trapezoidal in shape. Usually we find three orifices that is one distal, mesiobuccal and mesiolingual. You can also equally expect two distal canals. So this is how it looks when there are four root canals. So it is two distal and two mesial. Which this is one of the commonest variations seen in the mandibular first molars. The anatomy is very similar to a mandibular second molar also. So usually in the second molar also we find two orifices in the mesial and one in the distal or sometimes only one in the mesial and one in the distal. Apart from these variations what we studied the normal variations you should also expect you should take a proper case history and proper you should properly examine the patient to know if there are any variations in the development that is these are the few de developmental anomalies, anomalies that you have studied in your oral pathology. So you should, you should be prepared for all these situations before we start an endodontic treatment. It should not be a surprise after we enter the axis cavity. Similarly these are the other few variations which you can expect gemination, fusion, torodontism, dilaceration. Why should you know this is you are better prepared to handle such cases, such challenging cases before you start up the case. You make sure you have all the equipment that will help you in completing or you don't land up in any mishaps while doing endodontic treatment. So this is another variation that you can expect. Another commonly found uh, so variation is the C-shaped canal. Now you should be wondering what is this, what is this, how is this different from the normal anatomy. The normal anatomy you find three, one, sorry, one orifice, second orifice and the third orifice. But in a C shaped canal there is a thin pulp or a ribbon shaped pulp which connects all these three orifices thus taking the shape of a C. So this is a C shaped canal. These are the most challenging root endodontic treatments but uh, this type of anatomy is most challenging for an endodontist because to treat this part of the pulp between the orifices the thin ribbon shaped pulp tissue between the orifices is really challenging. The last few other variations what you can expect is the internal resorption that is the ballooning of the root canal within the tooth. So this you should have a prior knowledge by observing an x-ray and be prepared to treat it appropriately. 
this is another variation though not in the palpal morphology the resorption of the bone due to the palpal pathosis and the another commonly found variation is the pulp stones or the calcifications i'm sure you would have studied this in oral pathology so sometimes as soon as you land up as soon as you remove the roof of the pulp chamber you do not appreciate the dark color of the floor of the pulp chamber that should be due that would be due to the pulpal calcifications which have to be removed if you have to gain access into the root canals so these are all the variations that you can expect before during endodontic treatment so we should have a complete knowledge of the anatomy look at properly examine the radiograph expect what are the variations how many root canals how are they exiting what is the root canal morphology and also have a good clinical examination see the size of the tooth similarly if the size of the tooth is big so you can expect a bigger pulp chamber if the if it is an aged patient you can see a constricted pulpal cavity so all this knowledge of the anatomy of the tooth helps us for a successful endodontic treatment so thank you students